Hey folks, it's Kikoskia here, and welcome back to Let's Replay Icewind Dale, the Enhanced Edition. And wait, last we left off, we are still in one of the ten towns of Icewind Dale, East Haven. It may look like a village here, but the place is bigger than what we see here. This is just a part of the settlement at large. We've been going around doing quests and helping people out, delaying talking to Rothgar. There is a temple we're going to go and examine, and I this building that we're going to enter. So let us go in and see if there's anything of interest. The answer is... not really. There is a townsperson, and that's it. There is, however, a question mark. Strange writing appears all over the walls of this small hut. The language is unfamiliar to you. you have need of Maybe there is something interesting here. A minstrel! Ha! Now you're a sight for cold eyes! Hasn't been much in the way of entertainment since old Jed fell out of his boat last month in Dinnershire, and we had to fish him out before he pickled the lake. So, Minstrel, going to regale the winter's cradle with a few tales tonight? Perhaps. I would like to hear some tales from you first. It's only fair, is it not? Tell me of East Haven. East Haven? Lived here for quite a span, I have. Ah, oh, well, that's, uh... That's generic dialogue. And... Nothing else! Ready. Okay, so there is dialogue for various classes and races talking to the people of the town, which is quite interesting. Go Something on. I didn't realize when I was initially playing. Also, scores of knucklehead hang from these wooden racks. The stench from the dying fish is almost unbearable. Keyword, almost unbearable. Now, I believe this is the temple, and outside the temple is townsperson. We're gonna ignore townsperson and pop into here. Easy as goblin now, there's a lot of stuff to look at here. This battered steel helmet is crested with the five serpentine heads of Hydra. The inscription upon its stand reads, The Helm of Gardoon Greenaxe. Gardoon was the captain of the famed adventuring company, the Dragonclaw Clan. The fate of this legendary swordsman remains a mystery, though he is presumed to be dead. He was last seen entering the Marsh of Toon alone. Oh dear. This is a large shield with the symbol of a white sword emblazoned on its surface. Numerous dents and scratches indicate the shield's seen many battles. The inscription upon its stand reads, The Shield of Ahonen. A veteran of many battles against the Uthgar barbarians, Ahonen was slain whilst battling a white dragon matriarch upon the shores, upon the waves of Lac Dinashir. His body and blade were never recovered. Interesting, then. This long and slender lance is of astonishing quality and workmanship. The entire length of its shaft appears to have been coated in gold, and its handle is inlaid with various precious gems. The inscription upon its stand reads, The Golden Lance of Kedwir. Heralded as the greatest horseman to ever ride into battle, Kedwir died gloriously upon the fields of the dead alongside his trusted charger, Onyx. There's a lot of stuff in here. Powerful! Magic items, no doubt. We can't get them, but... They're here for others to look at, as they worship. This huge warhammer looks as if it would take the combined strength of two men to wield it. Its thick steel head is bound with studded bronze bands, and it's speckled with what appears to be dry blood. The inscription upon its stand reads, Bonecracker. This magnificent weapon belonged to the legendary warrior Dumok the Fist, who died in the assault on Dragonspear yes, Castle. Not time. We're not wasting time, Radella, we're learning. Learning is important. Always endeavour to learn something new every day. Every day is a chance to broaden your horizons. The blade of this battle axe is buried deep into the stand upon which it rests. Hundreds of tiny notches have been whittled into its black oaken handle. The inscription upon the stand reads, Bloody Astrum's Axe. Oh, man, this merciless warlord reputedly... Oh, hang on. It uh, cut off there. This merciless warlord repeatedly used this axe to personally execute his prisoners. He was eventually brutally dismembered by his own troops. I want to make this a little bit bigger. Let's let's make it like that. There we go. And finally, this is a round shield with a number of wicked barbs protruding from its surface. A flaming sword, the holy symbol of Tempest, has been etched into the center of the shield. The inscription are. upon its stand reads, The Shield of Mergreth of the Order of the Steel Fang, slain on the 11th day of the battle at Borska Bridge. Interesting. So we have... Akalia and... Everard! Let's talk to Akalia. Hello, my name is Akalia. I'm an initiate here at the Temple of Tempus. I help Everard maintain the Temple Armory and perform rituals. Greetings, Akalia. Rituals, you say? 
What kind of rituals? We celebrate the Feast of the Moon in remembrance of the Battle Dead. We also sing the Song of the Sword at least once a ten day. Because of the church's close proximity to the site of so many great battles, our congregation also has local celebrations to remember all the mighty conflicts that have raged across Icewind Dale. The most important daily ceremonies are the Feast of Heroes at High Sun and the Song of the Fallen at Sunset. What local battles do you celebrate? We celebrate the Battle of Jared Stone. I'll te I tell you more about it, but Everett prefers that question. Everett prefers that any questions about it be directed to him. He has somewhat of a different perspective on the teachings than most. Ask him about it if you see him. What's Everett like? Everett, well, Everett is still adjusting to his position here. I think he'd much rather still be serving Tempus on the front lines, but his duty is to guard this holy site, the site of Jared Stone. You should ask him about it. He knows more of a tale than I do. The game is really, really pointing us towards asking Everett. Everett is both a warrior and a priest. How does that fit into the Temporan faith? It's actually part of a simple truth that we Temporans believe. Conflict is all around us. Every man and woman has something that he or she believes in, which he or she will die to promote or preserve. Tempest tells us that we should live for something of importance. If we kill, if we die, the same. We preach that conflict and war are vital to mankind's existence. I agree, even if we don't like the fact that it's happening. Conflict is pretty inevitable in life. Exactly. That's why we East Haverders practice the temper and faith, and perform rituals of a lord of battles. I understand now. Farewell. Now we'll have a bard talk to Everett. No task. Hmm. Rothgar mentioned there were strangers in town. What is it you want? Everard is one of the voiced NPCs, so you know he's quite important. I'm Radella Jones. Are you the high priest of his temple? Yes, I am Everard. Everard of Tempus, battle priest of the Lord of Battles. What brings you here? Tempus is the god of war, is he not? War is but one of Tempus's aspects. Warriors, true warriors, worship him as well. You carry the scars well, Everard. Were you wounded in battle? These eyes have seen battle, yes. And my skin bears the mark of swords and axes. That was long ago. Now my place is here. Why would you leave battle behind? Because there are many ways one may serve one's god. I am of the order of the broken blade. My duty is to watch this place. You said that word with some disdain. Order of the broken blade? Yes. We are, were, warriors. Wounded in battle, our injuries now keep us far from the front lines. Still, we are fit to guard holy sites to our lord. This is a holy site? It is sacred to Tempus, yes. It marks the field where the barbarian Jared gave up his life ages ago. He lies encased in stone beneath this temple. This is definitely not going to be important to the plot of the story. I mean, it's not like the game heavily implied that this was a significant event in the introductory cutscene. Oh no! Never gonna be brought up again after we leave East Haven. Nope, not at all. What happened? Jared was a shaman who lived long ago. He brought unity to the northern tribes and led them to victory against the army of Arakan, at the cost of his life. This dialogue is summarizing the introductory cutscene well, just in case you pressed escape and skipped it. Or you forgot about it. How did he die? Once Arakan saw his army routed by Jared and the Northern Tribes, he sought to bring the Hells to his aid. Arakan opened a gate to the Lower Plains. He brought demons to the battlefield? The Northern Tribes would have been destroyed. I do not believe that. Jared did. It is said that Tempus himself appeared to Jared upon the battlefield, and Jared took that as a sign. I think I'll take what the God implies over what you think, Everard. I don't think the barbarians would have done well against the demons. A sign to do what? Jared believed Tempus was calling him to sacrifice himself for his people to ensure victory. And so he cast his body into the portal, his blood fusing it to stone. It lies entombed beneath the temple to this day. You don't sound like you agree with Jared's choice. Jared had no need to sacrifice himself. Tempus's appearance was a test of faith, proof Jared's people had already won the field that day. Jared failed his god and died a coward's death. Are you sure his death was in vain? 
Jared did seal the port. One dies for Tempest with a blade in one's hand, not by martyring oneself within the embrace of infernal magics. Jared's duty was to stand with his comrades, not cast himself to his death when the field was already theirs. His sacrifice may have prevented other deaths, Everard. Sacrifice? Let me say this of sacrifice, young one. Then we shall speak of this no more. Sacrifice is a death that has meaning. When it is in vain, it is not sacrifice. It is a waste. That is the lesson of Jared Stone. This guy has some very strong opinions on this. And we get a journal update. And this stone is buried beneath the temple? Aye. A great stone disc that holds Jared's corpse for eternity. And so I watch and guard it in Tempest's name. This guy's bitter. Very bitter about this. I see. I had some other questions I wish to ask. I wish to ask you. You are free to ask, traveler. I promise no answers. There's a lot of stuff here. So we've asked that, we've asked that, we've asked that. We haven't asked this. Do you know anything about the expedition that Rothgar's putting together? I have heard of it, yes. A messenger from Kaldahar visited the temple not long ago, and it has spurred Rothgar to see what is happening in the north. A messenger? Yes. A man from Kaldahar found his way to our door, and he was dead by morning. He claimed he was a messenger from the Archdruid of Kaldahar. What did he want? The man spoke of disturbances in Kaldahar. His wounds prevented me from making any sense of his words. Perhaps Rothgar understood more than I, for he's preparing an expedition. I can guess the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Are you going on this expedition? No. For my place is here. Were I invited, I would still not go. My injuries would only slow the expedition. I'm not going to ask that. It's going to break us into a circle. Or maybe I should. Your injuries, were you wounded in battle? These eyes have seen battle. Yep, we've yes. seen that. You are free to ask, traveler. I promise no answers. So we've got that, we've got that. What's that glyph-covered door behind the statue? The door leads beneath the temple to the site of Jared's stone. It was sealed with glyphs of tempest to prevent entry long ago. Fair enough. I see. I have some other questions. You are free to ask, traveler. I promise no answers. I was wondering if we might pay our respects to the temple, and perhaps receive some healing. Aha! So, donations, spells, items. There's quite a few items here. There is a scroll case and a potion bag. These are important to buy, so I shall buy these. We're not going to be coming back here for a very long time, so buy what you can, when you can. And I'm here. we have now finished that. Done. So let's go out and head Is over to all? one of the final buildings we can go to. There's a couple here. And here we go. There is this person and... There's that there. I'm very curious as to if I can pick that up without causing a fuss. Let's find out. Hmm? Done. It is. I mean, I can pick it up. It's a spear. And it doesn't seem to be of any particular note. But I'll sell it later. Ready. Right, let's have a conversation. Yes. Unless you're just... Nope, you're just town person. I'm not gonna bother. Now, we're nearly all the way around. We have this place here, and then Rothgar's. Here... is Hi. a place that has... literally nothing about it. Okay! With that... full loop, this is Rothgar's. Done. And then there's just the exit. So... We'll pop in here and see what Rothgar wants. We must gather our party before venturing forth. Here we go. we go! Now, there's a couple of things here that we can do. Like... Yes, I gotcha. Check out here. He's got to walk around a bit. He's got lots of uh, interesting things scattered about his room. An interesting rug. We're going to save before I try and open up this box, because it's going to be a bit tricky, I think. Nope, it succeeded. In here is a note. Let's have a look. If you are reading this note, then obviously you are a thief come to rob me of my hard-won riches. Sorry to disappoint you. 
Did you really think I would keep my valuables in such an obvious and unguarded place? Consider this note a warning. I do not care much for those who would poke their nose where it doesn't belong, and anyone caught practicing thievery in the town of East Haven shall answer to me. Rothgar. Huh? Huh. I gotcha. Well, I think we should probably put that back. <laughs> that is a silly thing. This one failed. Hmm. Yes. Can I force enough. this open? What it Let's will be see done. if I can. Yes! There are a few things in here. Nothing what of any it will particular note, but they're there. And now we shall have I am here. a you? conversation with Rothgar. Well met, friend, and welcome to my home. Make yourselves comfortable, but try not to break anything. Many of these curiosities that you see lying about have sentimental value. Where did you get all this stuff? Oh, they're all remembrances of my adventuring days. Little trinkets and the like that I picked up here and there. More keepsakes than valuables, really. Leftovers from my days of fortune and glory. Impressive. I sincerely hope I have as much luck in my quest for fortune and glory. Indeed. Well then, this might interest you. I'm putting together an expedition of sorts, one which would surely provide opportunities for both fortune and glory. This is the business I wish to speak to you about. Eh, sorry, not interested. Uh, hold a moment, just, just hear me out. Now, I've already managed to rally together a few swords for this expedition, but I fear our numbers may not be great enough for the task at hand. I figure that you might tip the balance in our favor. Sorry, still not interested. Farewell. Well, as you wish. Can't say I'm not disappointed, though. I took you for the adventuring type. Oh, well. I suppose you'll make great fishermen, seeing as how that's the only safe occupation around these parts. Then fishing it is. Farewell. But thou must, says the game. You can say no to Rothgar and proclaim that you're going to become fishermen, but in reality, you shouldn't have bought the game if you don't want to go on Rothgar's expedition, because you're adventurers, and... This is the literal only call to adventure we're going to get in our entire lives, so let's go on it. Back again, I see. Have you reconsidered my offer to join the expedition? All right, all right, we'll join your expedition. Excellent. Glad to have you on board. I plan to assemble the rest of the expedition and set out for Kaldahar within a few days. Note that few days is vague. You can spend as long as you like doing the part leading up to the expedition, and the game's only going to count it as a few days. With storms brewing in the mountains, I'd rather we depart sooner. But there are matters that require my attention here about town. What sort of matters? Perhaps you could help. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe you can help. Uh, Pomov, the local shopkeeper, has recently expressed concern over the rapidly thinning stock of his store. He's been complaining that the regular caravan from Kaer Dineval is long overdue and that if they don't arrive soon, he's sure to be out of business. Now, normally I take Pomhop's whining with a grain of salt, but with heavy snows on the way, it would be best to make sure that caravan makes it through. Makes sense. So what is it you want me to do? I want you to find that caravan. Leave town by way of the South Bridge and scout the hills west of Loch Dinnershire, between East Haven and Caer Dineval. Caravans always stick close to the shoreline this time of year. Makes sense. Once you find it, see the caravan safely to East Haven. In the meantime, I'll assemble the rest of the expedition and make the final plans for our journey. Return here as quickly as you can. We must make for Kaldahar Pass while the weather is favorable. Good luck. Safe journey. Farewell. And now we have our quest. Watch we go. We're going to go and find that caravan, which I'm sure is absolutely fine. Nothing terrible has happened to the caravan whatsoever. It's all going to be great and something terrible has happened to the caravan. Yep, yep, something terrible has. It's just a question of what. And so, where we go back, folks, our first true quest that's going to take us outside of East Haven and into the cold, cold world of the Spine of the World Mountains. We better wrap up warm. I know the game doesn't model it, but I presume that all of us are wearing heavy coats and long cloaks and all those things that you need to ensure you don't freeze to death in a place like this. And it doesn't even have any weight allocated to it either. It's magic winter clothing. Is it actually winter clothing here or is it just all year clothing? Hmm. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. 
Later.